We're here today with uh, Super Lake model driver Natalie Decker's parents, uh, Chuck and Amy Decker. Uh, glad to be here with you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, thanks Thank for having us. us. Absolutely. Uh, wanted to find out, um, I guess I can ask Amy first, uh, what are some of your uh, you know, favorite, fondest memories um, of Natalie's racing career, maybe especially when she was first starting out, that type of thing? I guess my, I don't know if it would be my favorite memory, but probably the biggest memory I have is when she was 12 years old and moved out of go-karts into a Mod 4 full-size car. And she had a, her first race to go to, and the night before, her dad puts her in our Jeep at the campground to teach her how to shift. <laughs> The night before oh, the race. The night before. Yeah. And so she's clunking around the campground trying to learn how to drive stick shift. Yeah. The next day she goes to Golden Sands Speedway and is in the Mod 4 race. And we went to the driver's meeting and she was so nervous she went with her full gear on and her helmet and stood in the driver's meeting because she was only 12 and racing against guys in their 30s and 40s. And she didn't want them to know she was just this little 12 year old girl. And so she was in the driver's meeting, all covered up in her helmet, and she went out and raced, and she did really well. However, she did get into an accident, oh. and it, she was fine, but they have water, like water barrels. Right. And so water, you know, she hit the barrels, water went flying, and I was just like a nervous wreck. The ambulance went out there, and I'm like, oh, my little 12-year-old, but she was fine. Well, and. It was a good experience, but I couldn't right. believe he put her in there, not, and she didn't even know how to shift the well, night before. <laughs> well, apparently she's a quick learner, and Dad knew that. <laughs> right. So that is probably my biggest memory. Okay. Uh, and how about you, Chuck? Uh, what else can you think of in her uh, career so far that really stands out? Oh, uh, yeah, so many things. Um, that was one of them, obviously. You know, I was driving around in CJ7 train to, yeah. in a campground. But, uh, you know, from the very first day, she stepped into a go kart, and uh, which I thought she'd be afraid of it, and we'd be done racing, and we'd go back to just uh, having fun evenings on the lake and playing with the pontoon boat and skiing. Right. But that didn't happen. You know, here yep. we are, ten years later, uh, racing all over the country. But uh, just probably one of the best memories is, is, you know, one of the things I'm most proud of of Natalie is she's won features in every division of every vehicle she's ever been in, in her first year, so. Wow, that um, is, that is quite she an She moved a lot of very, very quick, yeah. Yeah. So, Chuck, uh, tell me a little bit about the uh, the snowmobile track that you all have, like, you know, how long um, you've had that, and uh, I guess you you had a career in snowmobile racing uh, before, right? I did, yeah, my, I, I'm the youngest of uh, four brothers, and we all race snowmobiles, and uh, from a very young age on, starting about 10, 11, 12 years old, all of us, and racing for a, uh, a long career in summer racing mm -hmm. and uh, towards the uh, end of my career racing I had, had opportunity to be able to purchase a uh, solo track in Eagle River, Wisconsin which hosts the World Championship Derby every year. It's the biggest race of the year and uh, so just growing up racing slots be and there all my life racing and, and then uh, going on to actually own the track and become a promoter just kept my uh, dream alive of being involved in solar racing for my whole life. So I guess uh, it makes sense that uh, Natalie's more or less following in her dad's footsteps, <laughs> in a way. In a way, the racer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she yeah. Uh, obviously must have something in her blood to be a race driver because um, none of us expected it. We didn't uh, think she was going to be a race driver. Uh, you know, when you have kids and your girls, um, it's blasting in your mind that they're going to become race drivers. So, um, Amy, um, you're saying. Earlier, you know, when uh, Natalie had her little accident when she was 12, when you're concerned, you know, as, as a parent of a uh, professional race car driver, how do you learn to deal with, you know, the natural anxiety of, you know, your child out on the racetrack and it's obviously can be a dangerous sport, you know, how do you kind of put that in check and perspective or, you know? That's a really good question because I could not watch Natalie any of the years of her go-karting race from the beginning of the race when it would start and they're all bunched up and they mm. do the rolling start. I couldn't watch the beginning. I had to wait until somebody on our team would say, okay, they're all spread out. Then I would begin to watch. Um, and then I think it's probably been 
three years ago is when I finally got the nerve to watch her from the beginning, yep. the start, all the way through a race. And I guess I was never involved in any type of racing. Um, I'm, my background is performing arts and a, a theater, <laughs> yeah. musical director. And um, I only watched my husband race snowmobiles a handful of times. So sure. racing was never anything that I grew up with. So it was so new to me. Yeah. But as I, I think I grew with Natalie's career as a mom sure. being more comfortable and knowing how safe she is in the car when she's racing and, you know, just all the precautions the racetracks take and the Hans device that she wears. So right now I think I'm more nervous about her being on the real road, on nope. the highway, than I am on a racetrack. Because every time she leaves the house, I always say, look both ways, be careful, no texting and driving. <laughs> so. Well, mom's got to be mom, right? Right. right. Exactly. It, it, and, and Chuck, uh, you know, from your perspective as her dad, you know, um, of course, you know, with your uh, career in snowmobile racing before, I guess you, know, you had a, a pretty good understanding of, you know, the risks involved, et cetera. But, you know, how do you handle that, you know, uh, concern, you know, uh, um, associated with Natalie being in motorsports? Yeah, I was saying very well, no, very all too well. Uh, yeah, racing can be dangerous, but uh, like even some of the precautions taken, um, whether it's some wheels, motorcycles, cars, I mean, the safety gear, the, the types of helmets they wear, um, you know, you take every precaution there is to be as safe as you can. The cars are built to withstand crashes. Uh, the seats are custom designed for their sizes, and um, and we, you know, everything's always new in a car. The belts, the, the seats. I mean, uh, you know, accidents are going to happen. She's been in many accidents. She's been in some hard accidents. Um, she said throttle stick wide open, hit walls wide open. Um, you know, probably a day will come. Somebody, you know, she may even get hurt in a car. Um, you know, but uh, all in all, car racing is probably one of the safer sports. Uh, like you said, you know, they're, they're, they're designed to take crashes. The yeah. equipment's designed for the driver to withstand a hard crash. Uh, so I'd rather see her driving a car than a solo wheel or racing sure. a motorcycle or racing, racing a quad four wheel or something. Uh, Absolutely, with that uh, steel cage surrounding her, that's uh, say that's pretty safe. So it is, yeah. And they said the safety's come so far in the last. Uh, 15 years of car racing is just incredible. Absolutely. Um, and uh, so how do the, the two of you feel about, you know, Natalie's ultimate goal of making the Sprint Cup? I mean, obviously, I'm sure you're quite proud of her, uh, her goals, her ambition, but, you know, just thinking ahead to, you know, what, what all that may mean. Um, you know, what are your thoughts about that? Amy, you start with you. My thoughts are that you know, she's been thinking this since she's been nine years old. It's in her heart. Yeah. And it's something that she wants. It's not something that the parents have been pushing her to do. Sure. She's been bringing us along for her ride. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And, and what I would feel really good about when she makes it to the top is that she really cares about people involved in the sports. She loves her fans. She, she, makes a personal relationship with sponsors. She's actually, she's very genuine about the love of the sport. Sure. And so I I have confidence that she's going to make it there. So I, you know, I'll be there watching from the grandstands. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll still be the cook and maybe she'll still want mom in her motor home, but, but I, yeah. Yeah, I see. Uh, I look forward to doing a interview when she wins the Daytona 500. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Chuck, how about you? Your thoughts about her? Maybe yeah, uh, my thoughts are uh, sooner the better. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work. Or, <laughs> yeah. Between this running a business and uh, being on the road and working on cars, driving the, the race rigger, driving the motorhome for Natalie. And by the way, she has her own motorhome. We can have our own. We don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. No, I. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'd be happy to be a it'd be a fun day and a happy day when she makes it. Absolutely. Well. Thank you so much, uh, both of you, for uh, spending a few minutes uh, talking with me. Thank, well, thank you, you for taking the time much. to come interview Natalie and us. Absolutely.